Another factor influencing the size of objects we can see is uh, the wavelength of light. So remember that the um, wavelength of light is uh, related to the frequency through the speed of light using this equation here. So through the principles of optics, we know that we, can, we have to use a wavelength equal to the size of the object or smaller if we want to see the object. So with standard light microscope um, methods, we could see an object, let's say, down to the size of a bacteria, about one micrometer or smaller. But to go, let's say, down to a virus or lower, we need um, a smaller wavelength, such as that you could get with a electron microscope. So the um, you know, the visible spectrum is actually a very small portion of the entire electromagnetic uh, spectrum here. Visible spectrum would range from about 0.4 micrometers to uh, about 0.8 micrometers here. Let's look at uh, cameras now. A, a common type of camera is the CCD or charge couple device, which is a two-dimensional array of photosensitive transistors. So the, each transistor accumulates charge uh, proportional to the amount of light hitting on it. Uh, once the um, uh, integration time is stopped, the charges are transferred out, um, read out sequentially. So basically, uh, the charges are just read across or down uh, from one to the other, and they come out here. Those are converted to uh, an analog signal and ultimately uh, to a digital signal that you could um, read using FireWire or USB. So this is an example of a commercial camera. Um, the data sheet says that this CCD uh, sensor array is six, point, is six by five millimeters and contains this many pixels. And the lens, uh, you can get different lenses for it, but um, a typical focal length is six millimeters. So it also shows the spectral response of the sensor to the wavelength of light. Um, it peaks here around 550 or so. That would be a sort of a green. Um, it's actually sensitive to the near infrared. So remember, uh, we can only see out to about 800 nanometers. So this actually, this camera can actually be sensitive to infrared light uh, above 800 nanometers. From this information, we can also estimate the field of view of this camera. So we know that uh, we have the focal length, that was six millimeters. We have the dimensions of the image plane. Um, so from that, you can calculate the angle here um, through which the, uh, the camera can see. So um, using this equation, um, arc tangent, so we take the, this dimension, h over 2 divided by f, that's equal to the tangent of theta over 2. So for this particular camera, we actually have two focal lengths, one for the horizontal, one for the vertical. The horizontal field of view is the uh, horizontal dimension of the uh, CCD chip, which is 6 millimeters. So we divide that by 2 and we divide by the focal length f, which is also 6 millimeters. So the arc tangent of 0.5, we multiply that by 2, we get about 53 degrees as our horizontal field of view. So the vertical field of view is going to be a little different because the, uh, the uh, size, size of the CCD chip in that dimension is different. Just looking at a couple of other ways to form images, we can Use, we can put our CCD elements in a uh, linear array, so a one-dimensional array instead of a two-dimensional array, and then form a two-dimensional image using uh, a transverse motion of that array. So a flatbed scanner is a common type of, uh, of one-dimensional array like this. Another type would be a uh, x-ray machine like this. Here's another example, uh, which is a satellite. So a, a satellite um, orbits the Earth like this. This particular satellite, the NOAA weather satellite, has a one-dimensional array. So that's swept by the motion of the satellite and forms uh, images of clouds. 
Um, just some other factors involved in image formation. The uh, intensity, intensity that you see is determined by the illumination, the intensity of the illumination source, as well as the reflectivity of the point on the object that you're looking at. So it's actually the product of those two things. So that light is uh, incident on our image plane and then ultimately is uh, digitized. So there are two factors in the digitization, uh, the sampling and the quantization. So sampling means that um, if this is our analog signal, a one-dimensional slice through this uh, image on the image plane, we're only going to sample at these uh, discrete positions here. And then the other uh, factor is quantization, that we quantize those values that we sample into integer values. So if we use n bits per pixel, we can, we can have as, mo as many as 2 to the n values here. Okay, so an example here, um, we can do some calculations on um, our range of values. For, so if we have an 8-bit per pixel image unsigned, the range of values is um, 0 to 2 to the n, if that's the number of bits, uh, minus 1. So that is 0 to um, 2 to the 8th minus 1 or 0 to 255. Two's complement numbers, um, recall that a two's complement number uses half the range for the negative and half the range for the positive. So in this case it would be minus 2 to the n minus 1 2 plus 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1. So that is minus 128 to plus 127. Number of bytes in a uh, image of this size, uh, we simply multiply those together and we get uh, looks like 10 million uh, 36,224, so about 10 megabytes. Just an image um, showing that whole process of um, going from a uh, analog image on the image plane to the discrete values that are represented inside the computer. So our convention is that um, we have an image that's put into a buffer like this, a two-dimensional array. Um, it's going to be um, uh, considered to be pixels and the indices of those pixels are, are integers. So this you know, is really a matrix of numbers uh, m by n. So we can index an element by either the row column, so in this case it would be row this way, column this way, or xy. So our convention is that um, we start at 1, 1, that's what MATLAB does. The x or column increases to the right, and the y or row increases down. 